Hey guys, today we are talking about Italy wine regions and the most important wines on those regions. Now you have to understand there are a lot of wine regions in Italy and there are hundreds of different types of grapes and wines. But we are going to discuss only the most important regions and the most important wines from those regions. Now, as a whole, Lombardy, Alto Adige, Piedmont, Veneto, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, those are really uh, top regions in the north in Italy. They produce some of the most you know, famous and important wines um, from Italy. Then you go a little bit down, Liguria, Emilia Romana, Le Marche, those are, those are, not so, those are very small regions, um, nothing specific there. Tuscany, of course, is the most important, the biggest uh, wine producer in uh, Italy. Uh, then you go down to Abruzzo, that's there, they're having some really good uh, wines down there too, Puglia, and of course Sicily and Sardinia. Now, Italy is, is the biggest producer of wine in the world, all right? And um, Piedmont is probably the second most important region in Italy after Tuscany. So we're going to start with Piedmont. <clears throat> As you saw, it's located in the northwest Italy. Um, they are producing Barolo and Barbaresco. Those are two of the most beautiful wines in the world. Uh, they are 100% Nebbiolo and they are produced, of course, exclusively in the villages of Barolo and Barbaresco. Um, Barbera Barbera is uh, one of the oldest grapes ever known to human beings and uh, of course that's the grape and that's the name of the wine. You can see Barbera d'Alba, Barbera d'Asti and uh, some other style of Barbera but that's the grape and um, you know the Italians are laughing and they're joking that uh, they're drinking Barbera while they're waiting for Bar Barolo and Barbaresco to age. Uh, Barolo and Barbaresco specific here is that they have to age for four years before they're released for consumption. So <clears throat> those are very special wines. You can have some amazing Barolo and Barbaresco. And of course you can drink some not so amazing uh, Barolo and Barbaresco. Not everything is absolutely amazing, but the, but the good wines are really top in the world. Moscato Dusty. It's uh, produced from Moscato Bianco. It's a white wine, sparkling wine, one of the famous sparkling wine in the world, not just in Italy. Gavi is another very special uh, wine that they produce in Piedmont. Gavi is a little village uh, and uh, you know they, they, they hold a trademark for Gavi. You can have Gavi di Gavi, Gavi Principessa. Um, there are many different Gavi wines. It's produced from Cortese. The grape is Cortese, but those are really beautiful white wines, very, very light, very pleasant, very easy drinking. So uh, make sure that if you have, uh, for example, some ladies on the table and they want to have some nice, easy drinking wine, very pleasant, of course, not something uh, that it's not a good wine. It's a really good wine. You can always suggest Gavi. The other wines that they're producing is Arnaz and uh, Dolcetto. Uh, Arnaz is a white grape and Dolcetto is a red grape. Uh, nothing specific about the names uh, there. Veneto, another famous region in Italy. Uh, here uh, it's produced the, the, the world famous Prosecco. And about Prosecco, I just uh, let you know, guys, if you work in an Italian restaurant, but even if it's not an Italian restaurant, but you are selling Prosecco, you can sell Prosecco as a aperitif to your guests just like like hot bread, all right? Just mention Prosecco every time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, blah, 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 your introduction. Would you like to start with a glass of Prosecco? We have an excellent Prosecco from Veneto and you just mentioned some other things. But yeah, you mentioned Prosecco, you mentioned Venezia and it's like, wow, let's try, let's try. Uh, another great wine. Uh, that they're producing there is the Valpolicella blend. All right, so Valpolicella blend, that's a mix of different grapes, uh, red grapes, and they're producing Valpolicella Classico, Valpolicella Ripasso, and Amarone della Valpolicella. Um, great, absolutely amazing wines. Depends what kind of 
what type of wine you like, which if you like light and fruity wines, you can take the Valpolicella Classico. And if you like really heavy, full body aged wine, you can take the Amarone. Uh, and that will be, um, if it's a good Amarone, that's going to be absolutely uh, fantastic for you. Soave is another famous uh, wine produced in Veneto. And of course, uh, Pinot Grigio is, is a like the great Pinot Grigio. Uh, they're producing amazing Pinot Grigios there, so it's worth mentioning. Now, those four regions, like I said, they're, they're, they're important wine regions in Italy. We're just going to mention the most important wine they're producing, Alto Adige. This is the north part of Italy where Bolzano is, uh, Trentino, and um, the most important wine, in my opinion, they're producing is Lagrain. And the reason I say that's the most important wine, because Lagrain you don't, you don't produce anywhere else. And um, it's amazing grape, makes some amazing wines, um, and if it's aged, you know, because Lagrain is actually uh, fruity and very light, easy drinking, not so much tannin wine. And when you age the wine, it then turns into something really smooth, creamy, full body uh, red wines that I just completely love. I love to drink aged Lagrain. So if you have a Lagrain in your in your restaurant, or if you are visiting Alto Adige in Italy, make sure you taste some Lagrain. Lombardi, Lombardi, they are producing the famous Franciacorta. They produce Franciacorta just the way Italian, uh, French people produce uh, Prosecco, uh, Prosecco, what I'm talking about, Champagne, that's the Champagne in uh, the Italian Champagne, uh, just the way they produce Champagne in in France, all right, so Franci Corta is produced in Lombardy, uh, you should uh, open a bottle of Franci Corta for aperitifs uh, anytime you have a chance, uh, they have some amazing, amazing Franci Corta there. Abruzzo, uh, like we said, it's a uh, it's a famous, you know, wine region uh, on the Mediterranean Sea, on the Adriatic Sea, and um, Montepulciano, the Bruzzo, is the most famous wine they produce. It's a full body, um, like heavy full body red wine, and um, <clears throat> yeah, I love to drink uh, Montepulciano, the Bruzzo, because I love really heavy full body red wines. Liguria. The only thing that I will mention about Liguria, it's very small wine regions uh, south from uh, Genoa. Um, if you have uh, heard about the Cinque Terre uh, right there. And uh, Fermentino. Fermentino, this grape, produces some really full body intensive white wines. All right. Um, a very specific grape, very specific grape. Uh, make sure that you don't sell Fermentino to nobody that wants to drink something very light and easy, uh, easy drinking wine. The next region is Tuscany. Tuscany is the most famous Italian region, producing the most wines. And of course, uh, some of the most important wines are Chianti, Ronel de Montalcino, and the Super Tuscan wines. Now, Chianti is, of course, produced primarily from San Giovese. <clears throat> it depends on the Chianti, you have Chianti Classico, you have Chianti uh, Superiore, and so on, so then there are different um, percentages of San Giovese in the Chianti. It could be made of 100% San Giovese, but it could be made also 60% San Giovese and some other grapes. Um, while Brunello de Montalcino, uh, many years, for many years, the Italians uh, thought that the Brunello di Montalcino is actually a, a different grape, it's not Sanchovese. But uh, genetic uh, research showed that uh, actually that's, uh, that is a Sanchovese grape, uh, but it's um, because it's, it's a little bit bigger grapes, and uh, of course they produce some amazing, amazing wine. Uh, for many years, the Italians saw that this is a different type of grape, but it's uh, Sangiovese. They call Sangiovese Grande because, like I said, the grapes are a little bit bigger, and they are producing some of the most beautiful wines uh, from Montalcino. Uh, Brunello de Montalcino, uh, that's 100% Sangiovese, and uh, you will see Banfi and Nardi, those uh, wine yards, 
like the, the two most famous probably uh, while he has producing Bernardo de Montalcino um, and some years these wines are absolutely uh, delicious and you have also uh, Rosso de Montalcino uh, do not underestimate Rosso de Montalcino if you visit uh, Montalcino make sure that you test Brunello and Rosso uh, I have some I, I have some Rosso de Montalcino that that just completely erase the difference between Brunello and Rosso uh, especially 2010 2011 those years were amazing in Tuscany and they had some absolutely terrific wines there and let's talk a little bit about the Super Tuscan wines. Super Tuscan wines are produced in Bulgaria. Now, Bulgaria is on the uh, sea, on the Mediterranean Sea in Tuscany. Um, they are produced from different type of grapes, not the original Italian grapes. Uh, most of the Super Tuscan wines are produced from uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, Shiraz. And of course, they are mixed with some uh, Sangiovese, some of them. To mention just a few names from the Super Tuscan wines, and also probably the most expensive wines in Italy now. Uh, many years ago, the name called Marchese uh, started producing those, uh, gro growing those grapes. And he was laughed at, and uh, you know everybody was ridiculing him. But slowly, slowly, he proved that those French grapes are actually a very good to grow in this region, start producing those uh, different types of wines and uh, start selling them to some of the richest people in Italy and uh, royalties and uh, turn them into the most uh, expensive and most uh, delicious uh, wines in Italy. So uh, you have Masetto. Masetto is 100% Merlot. Remember that guys, it's produced on only seven acres uh, and a very rare wine, very expensive wine. Some bottles of Masetto sell in fine dining restaurants for like $2,000 a bottle. Uh, and then of course you have Sulaya, Sasikaya, Ornelaya, and the first Super Tuscana, and probably the most famous Super Tuscana wine in the world, Tinanello. Um, <clears throat> and I guess that's going to be about Tuscany. Now the other two regions we're going to talk uh, in Italy, Sardinia and Sicily. Uh, beautiful region producing a lot of different types of uh, grapes and wines but uh, the ones we're gonna mention is the Canonao from Sardinia beautiful red wine uh, aged it makes some really special special wines so make sure that you try some of the Canonao from Sardinia uh, especially if you like uh, heavy aged red wines and of course, uh, in Sicily, I will just mention Nero Daolo because this is the most, uh, you know, popular uh, red grape uh, from Sicily. They're producing many different uh, wines, both regions. But Nero Daolo is uh, is spreading like uh, a <laughs> spreading really uh, quickly around the world now. Any restaurant, especially any Italian restaurant, you will have a bottle of Nero Daolo. Um, not every Nero Daolo uh, will be uh, amazing wine. But lately, in the last 10 years, they are really cultivating the wine uh, and they are producing some amazing uh, Nero Daulas. So, uh, worth, worth trying, guys. Worth trying. And that's about pretty much the, the top regions and the top wines uh, in Italy. I'm speaking about those regions and about those wines because those are the, the wines that you most probably will have on your wine card. All right. Even if you're not Italian restaurant, uh, but you're having uh, Italian wines, you probably will have Brunello de Montalcino. You're gonna have Chianti. You're gonna have Barolo and Barbaresco. You might have uh, Nero Daolo from Sicily and uh, and yeah, Montepulciano de Bruzzo uh, also as well. So and of course you're gonna have Prosecco or or um, uh, some of the white wines like Pinot Grigio and uh, Ver yeah. Let's those are the wines that you will most probably have in your restaurant and that's why it's important that you uh, you hear something about them and you are able to uh, talk with your guests about those wines and about those regions all right and the next lesson we're going to discuss the french wines and the french regions but that's pretty much all about italy take care